So the flat ginger ale is uh, one of your... Um, I don't know. It's one of those things you discover and you go, I kind of like that, you That's know? Right. That's cool. Yep. That's cool. All right, man. Well, listen, um, I've already started the recording. I apologize for not letting you know that, but uh, um, I'm going to ask you, but I know what the answer is going to be. I mean, the answer is going to be, oh, it's a beautiful day up here in Napa. It's a gorgeous day, blah, blah, blah. So... <laughs> Let me let me ask the question again without you coming back with the standard answer. JJ, what's going on today, man? Well, I get to answer a question today from you. Now you are stumped. <laughs> all right. All right. So, guys, welcome to GoldBallHunting.com. Uh, Brent Abel here with uh, the great Jeff Jacklich up there in the, I know, the beautiful Napa Valley, California. <clears throat> Got to do it. Got to do it. Uh, and typically what we do is we put each other in the hot seat every day. This is totally unscripted, and uh, we are sharing uh, stories from personal stories that um, have helped us become better tennis players, not only as tournament players, but, you know, if you're a league guy and you want to up your rating label to a new rating or just get a higher winning percentage, or if you're that Wednesday night guy and you got doubles out there and you got your three other buddies, and you guys play Stinko, where you switch partners, you play three sets, everyone gets a different partner, and, and you want to be the man every Wednesday night. You want to own it. You want, and, and you want them to be buying you that first beer. Um, then this is the right spot for you to be, goldballhunting.com. So, Jeff, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. And this is this is something you're going to love because you're just going to have no, no. <laughs> Does this no sound nerves. like a setup or what? Oh, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. But let's say, <laughs> let's say that the rules of this tournament match are that when you go out there, and this is a guy who you've never played before, and the rules say that Jeff, yeah, shake hands. Hi, this is. This is Billy Bob, or this is Bubba, this is someone. Um, and you have to tell them that you're going to play one and only one shot pattern for the entire match. So this guy has a, he has a total heads up as to what you're going to do. Jeff, what would be that one shot pattern that would, even if you told the guy what was coming, and before the match, and then you had had to repeat it after the next, after every point. Hey, dude, I'm, I'm going to be doing this again. Right. <laughs> and I want everyone to be thinking about this because I'm not saying this is kind of a, a I'm, I'm serious. Right. Everyone's got to figure out what is their one shot or their one shot pattern without, and I'll condition it without, without saying that this is not something where you've got a shot pattern where it, it yields outright winners. No. Point after point after point. I know what mine is. If you were to ask me this question, I know it'd be easy for me to say that. But for you, Jeffrey Jacklich. You think it's different than yours? <laughs> Jeffrey Jacklich the third, I don't know. Um, what is that what is that shot pattern that you could tell the guy is coming again? Okay, so uh, I got I got a couple uh, pre questions then on the for the answer then. So are we are we talking about uh, the point has already started, and we're we're already past the serve and return. Or is this a service question and or a return question separately? Or we we're already into the into the point. No, man, this, this is not part of the rules of the unscripted thing. <laughs> you can't just be sort of you know thinking about it, sort of stalling and buying some time by okay. asking more so, conditional questions. Okay, so, so I'm let's say then. so 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 I'm let's answer it my right. way then. How about that? You I'll answer just answer it, your way. it my way. Good. You answer you questioned it your way, I'm answering my way then. Here <laughs> okay. we go. Okay, if I'm if uh, assuming I'm serving, um, I'm gonna serve body. Serve body at the guy, probably give him that and it, uh, let's say assuming he's a right hander, I'm gonna serve, serve body swinging into that left hip area. Whoops. I just served myself into that left hip area yeah, there. That's good, right? that's right. Well, it totally messed everyone up. That's and so I can excited. see why that serve of the body, the left hip is messing him up and, too. Um, and uh, I'm going to be uh, 
mixing it up, serving and volleying, and serving and looking for that short ball sometimes. So I'm going to mix up that play. I'm going to serve uh, heavy body, serve and serve and come in and volley into open court. No, no, man, those are those are two different patterns. <laughs> uh-uh. You can okay, you, then. you I'm, can I'm choose serving. you can choose one of those two, either serve and volley and tell the guy, dude, I'm serving to the body and I'm coming in, or I'm, I'm, serving, I'm serving to the body, the body and I'm standing in. back. I'm, I'm serving to the body and coming in. Okay. And uh, and on the return, I'm going heavy, heavy. Um, again, kind of left hip right at the guy on the return. Heavy up the center of the court and to force him to choose and make a side and have to get out of the way of the first ball. Good. So that's – I tell him that all day long. And I just keep hammering away well, at so it. So both of those, both of those, as we talked about in yesterday's episode, which was, I think it was yesterday's episode about touching the ball. Maybe it was a couple of days ago. But you've got to allow the guy to touch the ball. So, so what you're saying is your pattern definitely would be telling him, I'm going to allow you to touch the ball because I'm serving right at you. Right. And I'm returning right at you. Yeah. So to me, that's kind of like, those are like patterns that are so – anyone can do that. They're doable. They're very, very doable. Very doable. And what I encourage everyone to think about, I mean, if you were to ask me that question, I would say, you know, I would say that I, – I would say if I get – you know, I'm, I'm in a backcourt rally, I'm just sliding the backhand cross court all day. That's all I'm yeah. doing. And I'm going to tell him that. I'm going to say, dude, hey, nice to meet you. Brent Abel, webtennis.com, sales and marketing. Um, I am <laughs> – I'm going. I'm going cross court into that ad quadrant all day. Whether you all give day. me, if it's a backhand, I'm gonna slide it in there. If you go up the line, I'm gonna roll a semi light topper uh, into right. in, in in that quadrant. So there you have it. That's me. And and the reason I think it's good for everyone to think about this is number one is to sort of assess. <clears throat> you talked about it yesterday. Assess your toolbox. And really, is there is there one or two things in there that aren't like dreams, that aren't like bucket list tools, right? But that are actual things that you could pull out, and you know, someone put a gun to your head, you could probably hit that thing nineteen out of twenty times, right? And uh, and what pattern could you could you tell a guy, hey, with this thing that I know I can hit nineteen out of twenty times? What pattern could you develop? And just because, and it's not good enough to say, well, I've got a good topspin forehand. That's not good enough. That's not, no. that's not precise enough. That's too scattered because you got too many choices. Right. Where could totally. you play that solid 19 out of 20 right. times topspin forehand? What part of the court could you play it in that would not be a winner? Right. And that Make would the allow guy the guy the to touch the ball. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So. So I think it's a, it's a great question this morning. I think because because it leads to um, having to be disciplined in the course of a match, having to be disciplined about um, getting yourself into the match where you feel like you're putting lots of balls in play. You're getting into every point. You're making your first serves. You're making your first returns. Um, the pressure of those things alone. Uh, up your percentages of winning the match. Um, what happens then is that, you know, late in the first set, maybe if you're if you're neck and neck and you're really going at it, the fact that you've been playing this standard pattern. Let's let's assume now that you didn't have to tell the guy the pattern, but you've just been playing this pattern, right? For for eight games now, nine games, and and now you you've got this critical moment of of a break point or an, an ad on your, whatever it might be. And you know, you go, God, he hangs this ball out there and you don't go dinger liner. You go, I'm just going to go middle of the ad court and you catch the guy frozen for just, just a microsecond. And, and in tennis, it, that is just hours of time. And so it's, it's, you've trained the guy now to expect something. And the minute I can get, I can train my opponent to expect a certain ball. I'm holding an, I'm holding an ACE in the hole now. Cause I can now decide when 
to play my wild card. And the wild card isn't some magical winner. It's just I'm going to choose to go here now and change the dynamic of the point at the most critical time for him. Well, their thing, too, is that, uh, yeah, I mean, if if that is part of your toolbox, if the other if if if, if the ace right. of, if the ace of spades is in your toolbox as opposed yep. to yeah, not, I'm not reaching for I'm not reaching for something I don't have. No, that's right. But the other thing to be thinking about too is that, look, when you've got the break point, and the guy the guy over there has all the pressure, not to miss. And if your if your go to pattern has been, for me. I'm going to keep going with that slider cross court in the ad quadrant. He could be thinking, and here comes the leaf blower guy. Um, he could be thinking, uh, he could be thinking, well, maybe he's now going to play the ace of spades. Maybe he's got something else. Maybe he's, he's right. been setting me up the whole time. And yet when you keep going back there one more time, he's going, this guy thinks I can't handle this. He thinks I can't deal with this, you know, and then it's like, well, I'm going to, you know, and the guy takes it up another level and it misses it or right. whatever. I'm, I'm saying it could be that, that your ace of spades is that thing that you don't change the pattern. That you don't change it. Correct. Right. Exactly right. And that's, you know, and that, and that's where, you know, you know, dovetail into your practice sessions, you know, when you're playing your practice sets, you actually practice that. I'm going to practice this pattern for the whole stinking set. I'm going to do this. And it doesn't matter that, you know, my buddy over there figured it out three games in. Keep doing it and just keep doing it. And you're going to see then your opponents react, your, your buddy over there react and try and do different things. And that's good because you're going to have to see all these different answers that are possible from doing this one pattern. And it doesn't mean the pattern's not valid. It just means you need to you you have now a database of answers that oh you know what none of those answers were bad. This was a little tougher than number two, but number two wasn't bad, and I was able to actually take that and actually and that actually created a different opportunity for me. So the critical part there is that is that you you have to get in there and do the work, the pattern work, and make sure that um, I got to move the mic because. Leaf blower guy is, is definitely coming, <laughs> or we may have to pause. Um, um, anyway, so so the, the pattern work comes into play, that, that you do it, and then you can decide in your match play, am I going to pull the trigger on this slightly different dynamic or not? Yeah. And like you said, you don't have to. The answer might be... Well, I, I think we all get caught up... <laughs> What's up, man? All right. No, I love the work you're doing. No, it's good. It's not the leaf blower guy. It is the uh, the lawn edge trimming guy. Oh, and I gotta trimmer. tell you, these guys work their butts off here. They they do such a great job. Anyway, um, there's a lot I... of lawn there in Palm Springs, isn't there? Yeah, there's wealth of roll right here. There is. Um, I think I think a lot of us, and I used to do this before I started trusting that pattern that I'm telling the guy here, you know, another one's coming. I used to think he's about to figure it out. And and so that I would go, well, I don't want to I don't want to let him actually figure it out. So I'm going to do something different. It's the whole yeah. thing about, you know, why why change a winning, you know, a winning strategy. Yeah. But it's. It's more, I think, in tennis that we go, that we go, well, this guy's about to figure me out. Right. We so start I, to doubt it. <laughs> I, need to, I need to mess him up right. and not let him get a beat right. on me and go do something. Well, I'm going to take this one up the line. Oh, man, I chunked that one wide. All right. Uh, yeah. You know, so. Okay, yeah, and that, and that was a 30-all point. That's right. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, great thinking, that's right? right? That's right. That's right. So. So this, I mean, this brings up too that, um, and this happens a lot in league play because because after all the coaching I've done, you know, with the three o three fives, four o's, four fives, and to watch it and hear them, the explanation after, you know, finally scraping to a break point, and then the magical thought at that moment is, hey, you know, 
I haven't tried lobbing over the net player's head off the return of serve. Now, you haven't done it for 10 games. You're, you're you know, whatever. You're at five all in the first but set. But you know what? They sure won't be expecting it. You know, I, I maybe, maybe I should mix this up a bit, and I should go with this backhand chip over the net player's head. Hmm, let me check my toolbox. It's a shot I actually don't own. But I think this is the right time to do it. It's the only break point you get for that set, and you threw it away because you actually didn't quite hit it so well. And yeah, yeah. Um, a monkey with a racket in their hand could have put away the ball that you gave the net guy. So the discipline of, again, knowing your toolbox and not letting the emotion and this idea that, that you know, variety, yeah, I should mix it up now. So, so here's another nugget, Okay. Variety is not a strategy. Variety is a menu that you build a strategy from. There you go. Oh, very good. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> clip that one out. I gotta make a note of when what part of the recording this is here. Clip that out. Make it a quote. It's gonna be all over the internet. Uh, no, I, I agree, Jeff. Um, and. I mean, I mean, as you were talking about the guy deciding to play the little chip lob and, and, you know, finally get a break point. I mean, I've got a couple of moments in my once in singles and once in and once in doubles where uh, I mean, one year national 50 hard court Santa Barbara. And, uh, you know, I'm playing the great Steve Cornell, who had just won. Yeah. He just won the national market. indoors in somewhere, Chicago, I think, and now he's coming down. I'm playing him in the semis. And this one thought that I kept having, and I was playing well, I was getting break points, and uh, this one thought was make him play. Make him play. He has got the pressure. You don't. You've right. got break point. You know, he's facing break point. So who's... <laughs> I mean, right. the last thing Make he wants him. to do is he. I mean, he, cer he certainly doesn't want a double fault. Right. Right. He doesn't want uh, to throw in a lollipop where you can where you could take charge. So he's going to go with probably a decent in play first serve. Right. Make him play. Do not right. think that you cannot let him touch the ball. And hey, wait a minute. Go back to that. What do we make him do? Make him touch the ball. That's right. right? We talked about that in a previous talk. We right. Did. And so. It worked. I mean, for me, it just worked. And, you know, I won that match. I think it was two and three. I mean, it was a big win yeah. for me. It was a big win. And that epiphany, that aha moment for me was make them play. When you get down to that big point, whether it's love 30, you know, or it's 1540 or 3040, don't right. think you have to outright win it uh, with, a, with a big thumper. Make them play. The other time, and this was on the opposite end of losing, where I was playing doubles indoors um, up in Seattle, 60 hard, or the 60 indoors. <clears throat> You're not quite there yet, but you will be. Um, <laughs> Slow down. Don't yeah, rush me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was quite a while ago, actually. But uh, we're playing against Brian Chaney and probably Dan Bohannon. And uh, first set... Cheney serving at four five. Serving to me, add court break point, set point. And How my, huge, right? Huge. It's big. They're seated one. We're just these right. little these little, you know, pawns over here. We're just there to make them feel good, right? And and uh, so my thought is, man, I better I better do something big here. You know, I, I really should because uh, I know that if I just kind of play it back and play that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, slack it up. So, uh, break point, I mean, set point, you know, I bury it, bury it probably 10 feet deep. Just, you know, you know, just gripping everything so tightly and right. just, I'm sure they'd taken a picture of my face at, at contact. It was like <laughs> this completely scrunched up, right. just, you know, teeth. I'm sure there was smoke coming off of the, you know, like I was drilling my own teeth and, uh, and so my guy, next point now, it's Deuce. He wins. You know, he just plays a little, you know, chippy return back and play. Guy missed the volley. Set point again for Branny. <laughs> okay, man. How, this time. How quick are you on the uptake, right? This time, maybe we should go 
bigger. So, of course, this time I get way out in front and, you know, dribble it off in the bottom of the net, you know, so we get beat, we get beaten straight sets. So another epiphany moment where I think even I came off the court and someone said, man, you guys had two set points, Brandy. What didn't even put it in play? Didn't even make them have to hit a ball. Right. What are you thinking? And I'm going, well, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> but now that you mention it, yeah. gosh, that sounds well, uh, like a great plan. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, might have had a different result. Right. Well, we don't know, but it would have been better than burying it 10 feet deep or bottom of the net. So I'm not sure where we got on this, but... Um, well, it was about, you know, uh, you know, uh, patterns of play, yeah. you know, and, and then we kind of dovetailed off of that a little bit yeah, um, yeah. and how those patterns of play actually create opportunity. So that's right. Uh, that's right. So, all right, guys, well, listen, so whatever patterns of play would have been working for me in that doubles match to get us there, uh, I should have just stuck with it. And that right. anyway, uh, Jeffrey, good stuff today, as always, man. Uh, well done on the question. I mean, on the answer. Um, what's the next thing? I mean, we're not done, guys. You can't just click off now because no. we're not done. What's, what's the next thing they got to do right now? Like us, share us, subscribe to us, and let us know what you think, and let us know your thoughts. If you have a question, we'd love to hear it, and we'd love to get back to you on it. Very good. And the other thing, too, guys, if you haven't already done so, jump on our email list uh, because we want to, for doing that, we got to give you a free video. It's a private video. The only way you can get it is to uh, put in a first name and email address. Uh, we will not spam you. We promise you that. But in exchange for that, we're going to give you a very cool video that Jeff and I recorded about confidence. Two things about how do you get it? How do you build it? And then, and then how do you know that you've got it? And, and, right. and it's not an elusive, ooey-gooey, we're to go check out and find the zone, yeah. open up the door to that zone thing, and ooh, clouds and heaven and all this right. kind of thing. It's <laughs> not quite like that. So um, right down below, you can find the link to go get that private video, or if you're listening to podcasts or someone else, just go to goldballhunting.com. Yeah. And, uh, you can get access to the video. So, Jeffrey, thanks, man. Great day. Always good chatting with you. And we'll do this again tomorrow. Guys, everyone get out there and make it a spectacular day. Can't wait. <laughs>